Hi everyone, welcome to the Honest Perfume Reviewer. Today I have seven fragrances to share with you, all in the leather category. And I've been, you know, my, my taste has started to evolve and that leather door has kind of opened up a little bit. Um, I would not even be sniffing these perfumes like uh, two years ago. But now, now that door is kind of open and I just recently purchased Iris Prima that features a beautiful kind of like a suede note with Iris and I love Iris. I find that leather and Iris sometimes work. Uh, Iris and Malacan is really nice. That has a leather note as well. But these are a little more challenging. And a friend of mine in our local community just gave me this little uh, bag of leather fragrances to try. I'm actually borrowing these, so they're, they're going back. And I'm not sad about passing them back because I don't... I mean, there are a few in here that are interesting and a few that I find too masculine for me, but nice. And then there are also uh, a couple scrubbers. Okay, so should we start from the bottom and up maybe? Um, the scrubbers, the first one I'd like to mention is Moroccan leather. I didn't like this at all. I really, really dislike the opening. I found it really sharp. Um, it has gal it has iris and leather, which could be good and can work, but it does not work in this one to me. And it has ginger, styrax, uh, some florals, ylang ylang and, and orange flower. But I think it's the galbanum note, which I normally really like. I like that green bitterness in with iris and maybe with citruses. But with leather, this just didn't work. It's just, or maybe it's the dose, it's too much. It goes too bitter. It's just, and, and with these florals and, and they're just tonka in the bottom, I just find it like really, really, really not good. Um, so, um, no, this is definitely a pass for me. The other one that I really couldn't stand, and not the dry, nor opening nor dry down, I should say, is uh, this Godolphin by Parfums de Marly. And I'm thinking like, not even on a man. I, I don't, um, let's see. Oh yeah, it has, it opens up like with fruity notes and it has some, some, uh, some herbal notes, like it's kind of a little bit aromatic. And I was kind of hoping for that orris. You know, orris is the root of the iris flower. But then I think it's just too heavy on the base notes. People say they compare this to Tuscan leather. Like, there are lots of videos where people, you know, do a side-by-side -side and should you buy this one, should you buy that one. So if you're familiar with that and would like like an alternative, maybe this is something to check into. Uh, for me, uh, I had to scrub it off. I really couldn't even stand it. Like, on one, I had my inner arm. I just couldn't stand even, you know, leaving it on. It had to come off. I, I really didn't like it at all. And then there's another leather that I don't find so leathery from the same house. It's African leather. Um, this was created by um, Alianor Massinet, uh, who has made a lot of their fragrances. I'm not sure if she's made Moroccan or not, but she has made like uh, also a Jazz Club. People, I think many people are familiar with that fragrance. This one is more of a, a dry, woody, spicy kind of fragrance. I think it also has, it has oud, and when this dries down, the oud comes out more. I didn't like the first 15, 20 minutes, but then after like the 30 minute point, 30 to 45 minutes, it's really, really beautiful. But I do get masculine vibes. If I close my eyes and just kind of smell this in my head, I see an attractive man in front of me. So. I just, I don't think I would, would wear it myself. And then it comes in this, with this little card and they mention like all these different animal associations. So I don't know if it's supposed to be, I don't find it that animalic, but they've written like elephant trunk and then cardamom, like one of the notes, giraffe neck, bergamot. And it's like cheetah paws, antelopes racing, uh, mere cat smiles, um, spices, crocodile tooth, etc. So it's it's and it's described as a safari leather, but I don't know. I don't really, I don't really get the leather so much. But that doesn't make, mean that it's a bad fragrance. That just means that it might have kind of the wrong name. I think it's more of um, spicy, woody, kind of dry fragrance. It, it's it is beautiful, and I know I've smelled this on a man. I used to have a travel size, and I gave it to this guy that I was dating. And it smelled so darn good on him. And I just realized he had to have it. So I gave it to him. Um, the other one that I liked, but wouldn't wear myself, but would really enjoy smelling on a man, it's called Halfetti Leather. And it's from the House of Penhaligans. And this is a softer, a lot softer than like Moroccan and Godolphin. Um, let's see. Yeah, it has, yeah, I don't typically like 
fragrances with plum. This has plum and then it has also cardamom, green notes, citruses, it has cumin, it has nutmeg. Nutmeg, nutmeg can be a little difficult, but this kind of, it's a little bit hard to digest in the opening to my nose, um, but when it dries down, it all kind of blends together. Uh, it's, it's really nice, but I get masculine vibes from this for sure. But I like that about like British perfumery. I find a little more low key in general than like Italian um, or, or French, which is French leans a little bit more like elegant powdery maybe and Italian is a little bit more loud. Um, like the House of Perfume Aroma is like really big fragrances. And I think Penhaligon's um, has more easy reaches for every day. I would say, like generally, um, I don't haven't, you know, I should really dive into those and, and try them more. But like the ones that I have from these houses are really like the British perfumery, like Jo Malone. It's also very low key. They're kind of a weak, their performance is quite weak. This one I think is probably moderate performance. Uh, I don't think it's a, it's definitely no beast mode. Okay, so what else? This here comes one that's really different from uh, the other ones, and it's it's really a cherry perfume. It's called Cherry Punk, but it does feature a note of leather. Therefore, it's in this little collection of seven fragrances that are leather based. It was created by Jerome Epinette, which has created also like a bunch of fragrances for Byredo, which is a Swedish brand. If you didn't know already, like Val de Freak, which is really famous, like their best perfume. I don't like Byredo that much, but. I do like Bal de Freak, and I and I they he also has created um, a bunch of fragrances from from uh, Wilhelm Parfumerie, um, which is a French house, and it's just a name I kind of see a lot. And he has like 160 fragrances I think in his portfolio, so he's quite an experienced perfumer. This one is uh, it's all about the cherry, and I think maybe. You know, like my American background, I used to go to the States like every every summer, every other summer when I was a kid. And the candy there is like really potent, artificial flavored, like, and they use a special kind of cherry that's like not real. Um, and I think maybe that's created like a, I don't want that on my skin because it re reminds me of candy that I used to put in my mouth. And cherry was kind of strong. Um, and it also has Sichuan pepper which is used a lot in like Chinese cooking and it's used a lot in spi really hot spicy dishes but the but the spice itself is more aromatic and not so hot you can actually bite in to a Sichuan pepper kernel and it's not that spicy uh, I think many people think that that is what makes the food so hot but that comes from other things it also has mimosa which I definitely get in this one uh, violet jasmine not so sure but then it has also pa patchouli and tonka I, you know, all these other notes, it has saffron. Uh, it's kind of all about the cherry. It has this root beer, cherry Coke kind of vibe. I just, I can't spend my time on this. I don't love it, um, but it was, it was interesting to try. Then what else have we here? Let's see what I have left. Oh, oh the, the African I already talked about. Okay, so then there's one created by Francesca Bianchi. It's from the house Hedonic with a K on the end. Uh, it's called Divine Perversion. This is typical Francesca Bianchi. This one was kind of a, oh, like I tried, I, I sprayed it on. Uh, first of all, it kind of hits me like, it smells like candy. Candy, at first it come, it has um, pink pepper and raspberry in the top, and then comes the iris. And then it, I think, I think that they should have removed the caramel. I don't love caramel, and I think the fragrances go a little bit too sweet. And then there's rose. And then comes all, come all the base notes, like the leather, the amber, woody notes, and animal notes. And I think I can sense all of these in here. Um, and I kind of get that kind of love-hate feeling. Like I'm a little bit intrigued, I wanna try it again. So this one I'm gonna give a full wearing. I've, I haven't given any of these really, except African uh, leather, a full wearing. See, I just, they have to kind of pass that needle's eye where I want it on my skin, like, to wear it by myself, I can try it on a little patch and kind of sniff it. But if I don't like it, then I'm not going to give it a full wearing. The days are just too few, you know, life's too short to spend a whole day on a fragrance that just to, just to review it, I have to like it at least. So this one, I'm going to give it a full wearing. I found it really interesting to try. Mixed feelings, absolutely. Iris, caramel, and raspberry. I mean, can you picture that? 
I think this this thing with red berries and leather, I don't know if I'm so into that. Like, I don't like red berries and chocolate together that much. And I think this is kind of the same combo that doesn't work for me. Like this, because the red berries are a little bit tart. And then comes like the sweet, dark chocolate. And, it, and the leather is not sweet, but it's kind of the same kind of clash between different kinds of notes. And I don't think, I don't think, I can almost swear that this will not be a full bottle buy for me. But I, my, I think I want to try it just to see, because you never know. And I think I find that really exciting that I'm curious to wear it alone, all by itself. Okay, so the last fragrance on this little list is uh, from Carna Barcelona, and it's from the Black Collection. It's called Sandor 70s. And this is a real easy reach. It's not so unique, but all the, the notes kind of blend nicely together. This one, none of the others have tobacco listed. This has a little tobacco, which I can definitely pick up. It also features the note of like suede and osmanthus. And osmanthus is a flower, but it is known as smelling a little bit like peaches and nectarines and also has a little bit of a leathery uh, nuance to it. And it has rose, there's some oak moss, some Peru balsam, cedar wood, vanilla, sage. It's kind of like all different notes. And especially in the dry down, they all kind of come together and you can kind of hint that you get that leather and tobacco in the background. Leans a little masculine, but such an easy wear. I could definitely wear this. Um, but it doesn't intrigue me so much. It doesn't like give me anything. It's maybe not so inspiring. And I find that with this house. I don't have a single bottle of Carner Barcelona because, I mean, I like them, but I very seldom love them. I don't know if I've missed anything from Carner Barcelona. Do you recommend anything from this house? Because I find that everything I've sniffed from there reminds me of something else. So I don't like need them. When I was into incense, I tried Megalium or Megalum, maybe it's called, and uh, Bota Fumero, I think it was called. And I like them, but by the time I'd gone through like half the sample, I was done. I didn't need to go any further because I was, there are better incense frags than those. So I don't know. I, this house just hasn't maybe impressed me so much. It's not bad and the price point's quite good. It's affordable. And especially if you go online, you can find some really good deals on Carter Barcelona. But I guess it's maybe it's a first step into niche. Like they're really easy to like fragrances. Um, but I just don't, they just didn't do it for me. Okay, so I'll just kind of summarize um, this little list of seven. The two scrubbers are Moroccan Leather and Godolphin from Parfums de Marley. The ones that I really like, but on a man, are African Leather from Memo Paris. And also, um, did I say Moroccan was also from Memo Paris? Well, it is. And also Halfetti Leather from Penhaligans. I like it, but I would like to smell it on a man. And then I find... Um, Sandor 70s from Carna Barcelona, a really nice, easy wear leather um, with, with nice notes that kind of come together with a little tobacco. It's a nice, soft uh, fragrance, nice to like, or easy to like. And then there's the kind of exciting one, Divine Perversion from Francesca Bianchi, that I really want to give a full wearing and see what I think of it. Um, so that'll be exciting, but I don't think I'll be going full bottle. I would be very surprised, but I want to give it a, I want to give it a try. I like to challenge myself. Uh, when it comes to perfumery, and I'll be passing all of these back to my friend, um, and I think, I think that maybe leather is still not like my. It's not a favorite. It's not a favorite. It can work, but it's not a, a favorite note of mine. Well, that's all for today.